Morning, everybody out there. This morning I'm at uh, the Port St. Francis. I'm gonna go and have a quick look at the, uh, the Lara Noah, the 620 balance, and just show you what we've done on her to, uh, to make her the machine she is. Lovely morning. So sad she's been standing here for the last, for the last year, well, since we got back in December. And uh, yeah, it's Standing in the sun, it's not exactly what we had in mind. Yeah, none of us expected that we'd still be sitting here more than a year after getting back from our knockdown trip. Yeah, and it's been a uh, super frustrating for John and I to uh, to, have to sit here and wait. Um, all of us are pretty fed up, and hoping we're going to get away in, in uh, January and uh, yeah, continue our trip. We definitely didn't foresee us sitting here and waiting for this this length of time as i said she's actually a 60 footer which we've extended to to uh, 64. Um, the 620s which come out now have been extended slightly so they're all going to be uh, 662 foot uh, obviously everything is uh, custom so it's up to the owner you know to make the different changes we've obviously set this vessel up more for adventure uh, sailing and uh, with the idea of uh, fishing as both John and I are super keen fishermen so yeah this is this is more fishing setup we've also got uh, there's also a, a bar system which is going to be coming in at the back of the boat here so that you can be basically hemmed in uh, when fighting a fish when you're doing stand-up um, once you've taken the trolling board out the way so that'll fit into the into these recesses here which gives you sort of a cage that you can fight in. But that's something which will fit once we've come down the slip and we finished our uh, painting and uh, survey to leave uh, next year. Okay, so this 620 is actually a, a 640, if you want to call it a 64 footer. And the reason why we've done that is to give us extra space on the back deck so we can fish and for doing your adventure activities, diving, etc., etc. Now we've fitted with the extension of the vessel we've, uh, <coughs> we've got a lot more space on the back deck now so we've got uh, removable uh, trolling boards these are all removable and obviously little cargo net just in case when you're sailing in heavy weather with a dive ladder but a that's our gas locker and just a storage locker here which you have spare fuel and things in there deck wash hose and everything in there basin shower freshwater shower that's a live well which has got pumps in it for keeping live bait and obviously the fighting chair which we had fitted which was something we did in a bit of a hurry before we left um, it doesn't swivel as much as we want to but unfortunately we don't have a, a hard patched <clears throat> and also the hatches in the is uh, sort of limits the position we can put it in but you know you're not going to be backing up on on anything um, in a hurry with a with a yacht you don't have the power so just keeping it tight and straight out the back and it'll do the job uh, perfectly now obviously our, our inflatable it's got a 30 horsepower four stroke motor on it it's got a center console and our seat which is actually under the nav table actually fits on the back it's designed to do that uh, as a back seat uh, with rod holders etc on the boat so our gear to fish like a sounder plotter all the things you'd need. Uh, the fighting chair is also removable and we have a, a fitting which goes on the top for a bait board and for rod holders. Starboard lazarette which has got the generator in. 
Now this has got a Northern Lights uh, 14 kVA and yeah I've got all the systems but it's got an incredible amount of storage in it things are a little bit untidy because we're not obviously not sailing at the moment and then the same fresh water and salt water systems both sides um, both are interchangeable steering gear etc uh, the boat can be run off port or starboard either on one or both sets so yeah it's it's really nicely thought out um, with all the amenities you require steering gear all this cable all rope driven so all mechanical uh, we obviously got hydraulic steering systems and fresh and salt water systems it's really nicely laid out all works really well it was great in the first sale now I've got uh, recessed uh, bottle uh, brackets which come in there we just pop into those fittings for the dive bottles uh, and then we've got a port side lazarette which has got the dive compressor and the dive bottles etc uh, 100 liters per hour and 30 liters per hour Schenker water makers racks for dive bottles and the same systems repeated on the side of the steering gear and fresh water and salt water pumps etc and obviously the dive compressor that's a bow dive compressor so yeah everything set up and and good to go for any adventure you want to pursue I'm gonna take a quick walk around just to show you uh, she's obviously got a single helm upstairs with uh, clears to protect you from the weather and uh, yeah super comfortable a lot of space we did a lot of jigging and and uh, casting for gts you know one of the things we did change was the, the anchor setup we had a few hassles in some rough areas where we almost lost our anchor gear so we've had the launcher on off we still haven't finished tightening up everything this will do this once we come down the slip um, but what we've got now is we've got uh, a dual anchor system with a Anchor system on starboard and port now. One for the heavy gear, the 13 mil, and, and the port side one will be for the 10 mil chain gear. Both of them with Rockner anchors. That's the light one, it's just to give us the option of throwing a lighter gear when we <clears throat> when we're in uh, rough ground. We almost lost our anchor a few times. Now just a view into the chain locker and the windlass, uh, dual windlass with 13 mil and 10 mil chain. We've also got a warping drum in case we need to do. <coughs> uh, Work with the rope, which goes over the top of the uh, lingeron. So yeah, all the trying to cover all the bases. We've got uh, 200 amp hours of per battery, so we've got 800 amp hours of, of battery power here, which is charged by the solar and the uh, generators, main motors, etc. Now, and in case you're wondering what's in the bag, that's a parachute anchor, um, either for drift fishing or if you have a problem in big seas you can put that out it's a big drogue it's actually a uh, eight meter diameter parachute which works really well in heavy conditions when you want to drift something we hope you have to use in bad weather so yeah that's not something you want to have happen boat's looking really nice and clean now but one of the drawbacks about being in the harbor here is the cormorants and the birds poor john has had to come in clean the boat weekly and he's actually coming down every night now to chase the birds off you can see what these what our shades look like from from all the bird droppings and that these will have to come off and be cleaned again but yeah they're all in good time really sad that she's sitting here we really chomping at the bit to get out again now she's a super comfortable vessel and runs incredibly well incredibly fast and uh, eats up the distance at the top of the coach roof we've got uh, four times 320 watt uh, solar panels gives us 1300 watts and about uh, probably just under 60 amps per hour uh, rechargeable under perfect conditions so plenty of juice and basically never had any problems um, when we uh, <coughs> did the trip up to Mozambique uh, I think we only started the gen set twice in the entire trip and we also did some motoring so that does help but yeah, no problem as far as your battery power, etc. is concerned.
An incredible amount of uh, locker space or storage space. We've got all the two tackle rooms basically at the back here. All our spare ropes, blocks, and everything in there. Our dive gear in this one. Yeah, we've got safety equipment in there and in there basically. And yeah, bry, bry gear, charcoal, whatever you you need, all in lockers down here. The boat's got an incredible amount of storage space. Got a massive seating area. I'll put some of the photographs in with the, with the cushions and stuff on. And we spent most of our times out here and obviously having your meals and stuff. And then up to the single helm, which is super comfortable. You can watch. The clears help a lot. Just a view of the, the galley and of the nav station on the port side and the saloon area four fridges two freezers two fridges and uh our television ice maker we've got another fridge on the outside which is the bar fridge and then also a in-use fridge for daily use uh, so yeah stove microwave oven so you've got it all. Now it's interesting to note that uh, the vessel has been designed more for uh, charter work um, and as a sort of a charter option. It's an owner design, it's uh, more for carrying more passengers. So we've got uh, you know six uh, doubles on suite um, and obviously to maximize the passengers you can change the configuration <clears throat> however you feel. <clears throat> There's minimum cabinetry, uh, we've kept the cupboards down to just uh, cupboard door, um, woodwork and edgings, so all the uh, cupboards and stuff are, are, are composite and with the, with the idea of keeping it minimum maintenance and easy to wash down, all the surfaces are composite so it's super easy to clean the boat, uh, wipe down surfaces, the floors are super, super easy to clean, there's no woodwork and it makes the boat a lot lighter, she's super quick and um, yeah, she's an absolute pleasure to, to sail and to maintain. Now this is the aft port cabin and with the engine bay open which is underneath the, the main bed, screen bed. In the engine bays we've got uh, twin 100 horsepower Yanmars, um, dual alternators, a uh, couple of pushing out uh, 50 to 60 amp hours um, both sides, 120 amp hours if you're running both motors, um, just to complement your gen set when you're running motors. This is your coveting. Inside plenty storage and into the uh, heads, which is en suite. It's a bit difficult to show. Just to go in behind the door. Oh, we've got behind the door, there's your aircon <coughs> cupboards with your aircons inside, more storage. And then heading up to your companionway, going forward. These are your service. Oops, get the lights on, so your, your bays for all your services, your day tanks and your black water tanks and then grey water downstairs, all self-contained, this is exactly the same on the other side, uh, all easy to access and to get to, and really easy to work on, works well. Moving forward, you have the cupboards where all the electrics are inside, and um, the midship's heads, nice size showers, basic basins, and toilet. These are sort of semi ensuite. This is because you're going into your. I just coming to the midship's cabin. Obviously, we haven't got everything made up at the moment, so you now these are the cabins, got fans. Uh, skylights etc we've got all the cushions and stuff in the the, uh, <clears throat> in the beds uh, I'll give you an idea this is the Ford cabin these are the smaller cabins they three quarters and would be made double as a crew cabin if need be and then going through into the into the bathrooms which are forward which consists of a toilet and a shower there's a curtain which comes down there, that's a storage up in the forepeak. <clears throat> that's just a curtain which comes down and pops into place with a basin in the corner. 
start with these are your would double as your crew quarters if you need be so you just close that door and then you have entry and exit through this hatch so yeah it's it's uh, adequate and very comfortable especially if you a bunch of friends as well and you're all staying together in the same you don't need a crew compartment as we were when we were on our trip and then going back this is where all the electrics and stuff are all the db boards and stuff inside there I've got a lot of equipment and stuff in there as well, battery chargers, Victron. Yeah, tons of storage in these little side lockers and stuff. All over the boat and on the floor. So, yeah, washing machine. All the amenities required to, to have a really comfortable stay. And the other side of the boat is exactly the same. It's uh, mirrored, so... <laughs> Yeah, the nav station has got all the necessary DB boards, etc. You know, tanks, the whole 2D. Uh, management system for the batteries, lights. And we've got a 3 kilowatt transducer and echo sounder, so we've got a really good system for fishing. Set uh, phone, uh, iridium, etc. So, yeah, all the things you need to do some good blue water sailing. Yeah, as you can well imagine, it's been super frustrating, you know, to do programs like this when we've had such a, a nice intro into what we were, what we wanted to do for the year, and uh, to sit and wait a year, you know, to get to doing the things we we planned to do. But we're going to be preparing anyway and getting everything ready, and hopefully we can cast off in in January. We can start the adventure which we planned or have been planning for. I'll be I'll be home for the for the launch of the Blue Diamond in two weeks time. If not, I'll definitely be out on the sea trials and we'll take some more footage and show you some of her her first day at sea, uh, rigging and sailing. Now she's a beautiful vessel. Uh, she's going to be uh, wrapped, so she's got a vinyl wrap. She's not a painted vessel, so she should look quite stunning. And looking forward to doing uh, a day on the ocean with her. If you enjoyed the video, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and you'll get the notifications for the next video. Look forward to seeing you next time. Cheers, bye.